Let's get things started with Matt Kawahara. Hey Chris, um, just what was your uh, what was your reaction first of all when uh, when Bob told you that um, that you'll be starting opening night? Yeah, I mean it, it, it's awesome. Uh, opening nights, obviously, I think early should be very special, basic for everyone. Not just I mean not just the starter by any means. I mean making a squad alone is very very hard to do. So I mean I don't really take that for granted. So I think opening nights is obviously really cool, but I think it's more so just. I mean, making the team and be on a team and having this opportunity to play baseball. Let's go to Manolo. Hey, Chris, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Chris, we have seen you come from a long way, you know, from that guy that he had tears in his eyes when he was recovering from injury to someone that always says that it does not matter if he is a starter or a reliever to earn in your spot. And uh, now you're opening the day starter. Uh, as a professional pitcher, what does this mean to you? Uh, a lot. But, I mean, I, I'm, I know I've said this in the past, but I'm just – I'm beyond great, grateful for my family. I'm beyond grateful for this coaching staff and this organization just because, I mean, they've walked me through a lot of, I mean, crappy times from in, injury then trying to recover from injury and um, growing as a human. So, uh yeah, I mean, I think it's just – it's full circle, but, I mean, by no means did I do it myself. I had a lot of great, great people kind of guide me along the way. Yeah, the other members of the rotation, what they did when they knew that they were starting to pitch, did they play ranks in you or something like that? You what? I couldn't hear you. What? The other members of the rotation, when they knew about the new, this, uh, news that you're going to be starting opening day, did you have a kid in a run with you? Did they play a prank with you or something? Yeah, no. I'm sure the pranks will be coming, but uh, I don't got any of those yet. Right, let's go to Martin Gallegos. Hey, Chris. Um, I know you've always talked about, you know, the journey for you to kind of get here and how, you know, was, you went through your ups and downs. Do you feel like you are a little bit maybe more appreciative of that as if, you know, maybe this would have happened a little bit earlier in your career? Just yeah, you know, I mean... Again, I am beyond grateful for just being on this team. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that. Um, I mean, I look back two, three years ago after TJ, and I questioned if I was, if I was ever going to make it back, period. I mean, I thought the, the end of my career was a lot closer than I thought um, just because I just wasn't recovering from that injury. But, I mean, I had, again, I had – this whole organization basically backing me every day, pushing me to just stick with things, um, even when things were kind of going like crap. Um, so again, I, I I don't take just making a team for granted at all. And I know, again, I know how hard it is. I know how hard it is to stay in the big league. So um, yeah, I, I think, again, I think opening day is special for everyone that makes the team. Let's go back to Kawahara. Um, you have uh, talked in the past it was just about how uh, committing to sort of the, the swingman role that you were in for a little bit was was pretty big. Um, do you was there like a, a point or a time or a start anything that you like? Are you pinpoint as uh, the the moment or the time when you kind of bought in and, and figured that that was what you had to do? No, I, it wasn't one moment. It was uh, I would say multiple multiple meetings with Bomel, multiple meetings with emo and just them just again just guiding me I, I think it wasn't so much them telling me the right things it was them telling me oh it wasn't the right things about baseball it's more so about me as a, as a human kind of thing of just kind of accepting what i can um controlling what i what i can control and basically just try to be the best baseball player I can that day um and it took me a long time and a lot of butt tunes I'll say to kind of get through in my head to truly accept that but uh, um yeah I mean I'm beyond grateful that I I'm probably playing for one of the best managers in baseball so uh um yeah I mean I owe a lot to Boma I owe a lot to Emo and this organization let's go back to Martine Hey, Chris. Um, 
obviously with with fans being allowed back into the stadiums this year um i'm sure opening night will be a little bit more special than last year without the fans um how, how do you kind of look forward to just uh getting able to pitch in the coliseum again and having um, fans in there especially against the astros which is always a pretty spirited game yeah uh i think every if i think every single person has been missing fans just because we play in some big ballparks we're we're, we're blessed to do that but uh I think we quickly realized last year that those ballparks are pretty dang boring if you uh, play with no fans. So um, I don't think you got to sit in the stands this year, which is awesome. But uh, seeing seeing the fans, knowing the right field crazy people are going to be out there with their signs and their, their horns and stuff like that. I mean, I think we're all definitely looking forward to the, hect- the hecticness of the Coliseum. Let's go to Shana Rubin. You said you had a, a lot of talks with Scott Emerson and Bob Melvin. Uh, what can you tell us about what Bob was able to tell you that sort of got your mind your mind right and let you embrace this? Oh, I mean, I just think over the years I tried I tried to control things that I literally couldn't. Um, whether it be where I was going the next day, whether it be sent up and down. Um, just, I mean, I was trying to control everything and in trying to control everything and trying to like kind of guide my career the way that I wanted to guide it. Um, it made things very complicated um, for me personally, not so much for anyone else, but me personally. So I fought and fought and fought. And then they were able to basically simplify everything for me. And I, over time, I basically stopped worrying about almost everything and realized that no matter what I did, I couldn't control 95% of the crap that I was worrying about. So why was I spending energy and time on that? And obviously I think it's kind of translated to my game of baseball where it's, I can only can control so much. And if I do my best of basically controlling what I can control, then that's all I really can do. And I, again, I think it's made the game so simple for me. Um, I know it sounds easy, but when you're trying to make a trying to make a name for yourself in the big leagues, trying to stick on a team, it's 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 very hard to do because you're always trying to impress someone. And I think less is more in, in a lot of aspects. Kawahara. Excuse, I think uh, I think you're the uh, longest tenured member of the of the pitching staff in Oakland at this point. Um, do you feel like an elder statesman, like in the on the team or in the clubhouse? No, I might have the most time here at Oakland, but I definitely don't think of myself as like the most like time person in our clubhouse. I I see Romo and I see Petit across from my locker, and I uh, I don't. I don't think for a single second that my word trumps their word just because I have the most time with open. I'll tell you that. All right, Chris, you're all done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.